Okay, so next we're going to have fabric development overview. Okay, Tong is going to present uh, mini fabric. his trademark. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, ready? Uh, can you guys hear me? I need a microphone or anything? Yeah. No? Okay, good. Uh, my name is Tong Lee. I um, work for IBM. Uh, this is not the company name, but I do recommend you sleep more. <laughs> Actually, it's the IBM shirt. Uh, so, so you heard about this, uh, you know, blockchain and the Avalon. It's great, right? So, it seems it can do a lot of things for you. So now you wonder, what, what do I do next, right? I heard all those stories. Great. Um, you know, there's a Chinese saying. Of course, if you say in Chinese, it's a lot cooler, but I'm trying to translate. <laughs> uh, it says that uh, there is a tiger who uh, wants to eat the sky. Right? He's very brave. He wants to eat the sky, but uh, he doesn't know where to start. Right? It's, it's too big, right? So I right, like the blockchain, I don't know, that kind of stuff. I mean, it's hard for people to kind of get handle on. So what I'm trying to show you is that, I say, okay, you, you, you got fabric, uh, or you got other blockchain, and Avalon is great. So what has been done? Now as the application developer, or as a user, what do I do, right? So this is trying to show you that process. So, um, now you want to deal with fabric. Of course, the very first thing is that like, can I have a fabric network, right? So, so the, the first thing is to set up fabric network. And uh, Dan showed that it's going to take 30 minutes, but it won't. <laughs> so if you have time later on after this session, I, I can show you it does not really take that long. So you need a fabric uh, uh, network set up. Then uh, you need actually uh, have the Avalon implementation for the fabric, which has been done for you, and it's on the GitHub. So you, you can uh, install those. Um, so I, later on, I'll show you the process to do that as well. So now you're trying to develop applications. So, so what do you do? So there are a lot of uh, uh, tools available. Uh, for example, we developed this uh, Python connector. You can use that to write your own application. So of course, you free for Go or, or other tools. So you can do the similar things you use the Fabric SDK. Um, then you basically run your app. So what we're going to show later on is like uh, two applications. One is the application that you hook up with, with the Fabric <coughs> network. You can catch the event. Things happen. You want to do something based on the event happening on your network. The other application will be just to produce those events uh, calling the Avalon APIs. So that's basically the, the process. Uh, in no way you're restricted to use Python. You can do uh, actually other languages as well. So uh, now set up Fabric Network. Um, I have showed this to uh, quite a few people, uh, include our uh, actually uh, Linux Foundation. So I created this little tool, it's called the Mini Fabric. Uh, so it's to the fabrics are like mini tube to Kubernetes. So whether you have just one uh, virtual machine, like a virtual box uh, VM, or you have like a physical machines, you just need to actually download the little script. It's like a 10 lines of a bash script then you can just uh, make that executable, then run Minifab up. Now you will have a Minifabric, you will have Fabric fully functional uh, network running on your own machine. I normally just do that on my uh, laptop, VirtualBox VM, so it just has like a four gig of memory, you can do that, right? Um, so this step actually will get you a functional uh, Fabric network. The next step is to install those chain code. Those chain codes are publicly available 
on GitHub, you can get them from the links. I, I, I mean, if you want to experience all this step by step, you can see that uh, I use the minifab command to install, approve, and commit this chain code. After you finish this, now the chain code is available. So, so this, this step is not specific for Avalon chain code. Any other chain code you develop, you're actually supposed to go through this process, make them available so you can call them. Um, now we, we, we move to the application side. Uh, you can actually um, use the, uh, the connector program we, we created. Uh, currently it's in Python. Um, we use the Python SDK, actually. Uh, what I normally do is just uh, have all those uh, dependencies packed in the container and then hook up the my own application code to the container. So I can easily update and run very quickly so I do not pollute my own environment because everything happens in, inside a container. And then you basically run the container and you can run other applications to catch events and produce events. So we have all those uh, sample code on the GitHub uh, repository. And if you're interested, I can certainly show you that. Okay. All right. One more so, any questions on the? Uh, yes, the mini fabric is that in lieu of using the uh, virtual box? Oh, it, I mean, it, it, you don't have to use virtual box. It will work on Docker, any Docker. Yeah. 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 Actually, you can you can run it on on Mac. It doesn't work on Windows. <laughs> you have a question? No. I think we have questions. You have questions. Okay. Great. So we're going to feed in time, and we're doing just fine. So Tong actually wanted to show the live demo how the fabric mini fabric can be used. Do I need the adapter? Yeah, the adapter is here. You just need to connect. Uh, I only have the type C. Okay, let me, I think I have one. So um, I just want, in the meantime, while well, he's setting up, I just want to uh, say that it's a very good time to actually join the Avalon community. Obviously, we have rocket chat, email list. We also will have meetings, developer uh, forum meetings um, every other Tuesday. We're probably going to have the architecture meeting every other Tuesday. And so um, feel free to join. This is a good time to join, even though you may not have a bandwidth to really contribute. Because this is the Avalon is very actively developing project, so it's a good time just to see where we're going and influence the direction and the kind of like provide your feedback what you would like to see done in the project uh, differently. There. Okay, magic. Yeah. 
show you how actually you can, can start up the uh, use mini fabric to start up your uh, network and how to actually install the chain code. So if you um, already download uh, minifab, which is just really just the one command, pull down the little script, which is about 10 lines of bash script. Uh, if you just send minifab, it will show you what minifab actually supports. You can do up, that basically bring up the fabric network and also install uh, the default chain code which come with the minifab, create the channels, join peers to the channels, all that kind of stuff. It does a lot of things for you. It's trying to, fix, uh, to, to bring up the fabric and make the fabric ready for you to actually operate against the chain code it installs. So that does pretty much everything for you. But if you just say, hey, I want to uh, just bring up the fabric network, you can just say net up. So it will just uh, bring up those nodes. For example, the older nodes, the peer nodes. If you have the CA nodes, it will do that for you as well. Right? So you can see that it does actually support a lot of things. It's install, install chain code, approve, approve their chain code, and instantiation or commit. This is for different release of fabric right? prior uh, to all is instantiate, then to all or later is commit. Uh, then allow you to actually invoke the the chain code, right? Um, other things, for example, now you have done few chain code invocation and you want to see what happened on your ledger. You you can do a block query, and or you say, hey, um, I'm not really happy with the channel configuration. Now actually you can do a channel query, then you can, when the channel query actually uh, finishes, you can see the, the configuration of the channel, then you can edit the, the, the configuration file, which is a JSON file, make changes whatever you like. Then you can, uh, I don't know. there. Because I'm not on the power, so that's why I go on standard. But you can make the changes to the, to the JSON file, then you can sign off the, uh, the change, then you eventually do the channel update. Um, and I can, I can show you all those things later on if we have, if we have more time. Uh, now for different things, you require different uh, uh, parameters. For example, when you install your chain code, you need to specify what the name of the, your chain code is. Then later on, you can also do chain code update, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, and you focus on a task that you're interested in. You will not you know, focus on the syntax of those commands. Um, okay, so what I did, what I did right before I came up here, so actually I just, this is the command I just did a few minutes ago. This does the mini fabric uh, up. Then I want to install another default chain code, which is called the simple, which is the uh, original AB store, if you know fabric. Um, it's part of the fabric uh, uh, repository. Um, that comes with the mini fabric. But I want to install actually one of the chain code for Avalon. So it is one of the chain code for Avalon is called Walker. And if you're familiar with that API, you know, you, you probably recognize this. So now I just want to install that. Before I did that, actually, I copied the, the, the chain code to the right place. Uh, I have that step here. Yes, if you look at the top, I copied the chain code, which is part of the Avalon chain code, to the right place. Then when I bring up the main, um, uh, a fabric network actually, I I was able to specify that chain code. So when you actually execute this command, it will do two things. First, it bring up the fabric network. Then it will do a lot of other steps. Very typical for fabric, like channel create, channel join, even do the anchor update. 
then eventually produce a lot of uh, uh, profiles. Those profiles are actually really important when you develop your applications. For example, if you wanted to uh, use the uh, VS Code uh, plugin, right? So you actually need a fabric network, sort of like a connection profile, right? This thing actually produces that file for you, right? You, you just need that file and import into your uh, VS Code, and then you'll be able to actually uh, do operations against that. Um, then also does the, as I said earlier, chain code install and approve and commit. So at the end, it will give you a summary. It will give you a summary that what happened. You can see that this is the chain code container. I don't know if you can you guys can see from the back. So this is called worker and they gave a very long name. This is a typical of fabric chain code container. Okay, so uh, I have four peers and from two different organizations, right? And I set up actually three older, uh, older nodes as well. Um, okay, I did not set up the CA node in this uh, configuration. So, uh, and at the end, it also tells you how long did it take. So for this, the whole process, it takes four minutes, right? It tells you, you know, how long it take. Um, I, I can show you this file. The reason why we had four peers and three orders is because I actually create my own fabric spec file. Here it says, okay, I don't want any CE nodes, right? I just want four peers and three orders. And I have it, right? So this is it. in a nutshell, made fabric can do a whole lot for you. If you wanted to play with fabric, then this is how you can do it very easily. Right? Questions? I'll be here. <laughs> Question. Uh, the four minutes, does that include downloading the uh, Docker images? So if I've mm -hmm. done it, run them again, it'll be faster? If, if you run this the very first time, of course, <laughs> to run those peer nodes, you need to pull down the peer node, or other node, uh, fabric images. Yeah. That takes a little time, but you know, the, for, for 2.0, even I think the 1.5, those images is not big. This image, each of those is about 50 meg, right? If you, it's not big yeah. deal. But so, so the four minutes is include, that includes no, download. This, this four minutes did not include the okay. image download. Yeah. So it wouldn't take, it wouldn't take a lot longer. Right? Yes. So, is it possible just to just create a very simple network with one peer and one order, or would Fabric just choke on, on that? <coughs> no, no, it wouldn't. And Actually, you can edit this uh, spec file, say, I'm not interested in creating any older nodes. You can simply do this. You can just delete, say, you, you can just use this spec, say, I only want to set up one peer belong to this organization. You can do that. No okay. problem. But then you won't have a functioning, the right. minimum is one, one order, one peer. Right, for this set, but the idea is that, let's say I already have Fabric Network running on one machine. Now I want to set up one peer yeah. on second or third machine. I can join this peer to the existing fabric network. So that's the whole idea why this is highly customizable. Where do you specify the address of the network? Excuse me? Where do you specify the name of the network that you're going to join? Are you talk about Docker network or are you talk about the real network that, uh, the, the physical network that uh, those? Good question. Actually, I don't know how much time we have. Um, <laughs> Minifab actually creates a Docker network called Minifab. Right? No surprise. So, so um, if you look at the, actually, you know, what, let me show you this. No. 
and I'm going to clear up this thing. It will actually take a few seconds to clear up whatever you have done, whatever I have done <laughs> in this case. It will be about 30 seconds. And it goes through a lot of things trying to um, uh, remove all the containers and the, the, the volumes that they created for a container and then clean up all the working directories, everything. So to answer your question, Minifab actually um, support one flag. That flag is, do you want to expose your end point of the peer node or older node? Right? It's just one simple flag. When you bring up the network, like I'm going to do now, uh, B, I say true. When I do that, uh, default, that flag default is false. Mm -hmm. So you set up your fabric network just on that Docker network. Your node uh, in the point is not exposed outside your uh, machine, okay? But if you say uh, E equals to true, that you tell the minifabric that you, you want the endpoints of your, your order or uh, appear to be exposed outside these machines. Because when you set up multiple server fabric network, you have to do that, right? Now you're probably wondering, uh, am I secure? Of course you are, because uh, Minifab always set up fabric network TLS on, right? So, so you just need to use the machine's IP address, which actually Minifab does that for you as well, and with the core mapping of your container. So everything now will be working even outside the, uh, the machine, okay? Um, so we, when, when, uh, when you use Minifab, actually also generate those certificates, use the SAN, SANS, so you wouldn't have the issue that uh, with the IP address cannot actually uh, validate those certificates. You will be able to do that. Okay, so now let me go through this the process again. And, um, yeah, this is probably gonna fail because I purposely set this uh, watch machine on the host only virtual box. So this machine is absolutely isolated. It's not connected to any uh, network. So because I didn't have the simple uh, chain code, uh, the dependency packaged. So it probably, yeah, as I said. So the install actually will fail. But if I do have the, the package, the simple chain code uh, in the right place, it will work just like I showed you. Yeah. Can I ask a more high level question? Than the sure. So, how difficult is it to port now Avalon to another blockchain? So, how complex is that set of code that, that you know, the chain code for Fabric, the, the smart contract interface, is, how complex is that? And how much of an effort would it be for V100 to bring it over to the software? Yeah. Actually, I know very little about other blockchain platforms, so. No, in general, how complex is that, is that code? Oh, that I mean, if we talk about fabric <laughs> implementation for yeah, Avalon, chain those code. chain code actually is very, very simple. It's really just take the input, say, hey, from the request, you want to do something. Okay, what is your input? And it will save those input. Eventually, other parties that say, oh, I did this actual work. With this given set of parameters, this is the result. So it's a relatively simple set of state. Very, very simple. So yeah, it's it's super simple. simple. Yeah, that, that was my next question. Is there is there now a um, like an API or some module that you can communicate, for example, talking to Fabric, talking to Saki repeatedly? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's governor basically by the Avalon spec 1.1. So it's really very well defined. So does the chain code, Avalon chain code call a go client API for Avalon, for example? I mean, what, what language is the chain code written in? Oh, Go. Okay, yeah. so how does Go interact with Avalon? Is there some client API? Yeah, so that's the connector part. It's, it's the other way around. 
It's not the chain code column Avalon thing. It's really the Avalon connector or application invoke the chain codes. It's that way. So, so that's why earlier probably people talk about the proxy model. Okay. Yeah, so the, um, on the circles I actually used to work on circles, so the, I know how to create transaction processor. It's pretty easy. For circles, you have two options. One of them, you potentially don't have to do anything if you, I don't know in what stage now, Seth. If Seth works, then, um, oh, you could run on Seth. You can just run on that. Another one to create a transaction uh, connector, uh, it's um, at that time I was learning Sotus and I was developing similar uh, transaction processors for PDO that I mentioned before. And it took me about the, much longer than it should because I learned the, it was my first project on the um, blockchain. So it took me about a month. I think now I would be uh, able to do this like in the week. Is there any, is there any code anywhere? Yes, yes. Um, I can send you that code. I think it was removed from the um, PDO repository, but I can find that probably in my uh, backup. And I'll, reach out, I'll reach out the email. The, the fabric chain code is all part of the Avalon repo. The repo. Yeah, yeah. You, you can find them, uh, not only the chain code, but also the connector implementation in Python. As a follow-up to the, Dave's question, um, the, the, chain, the chain code or the on-chain part of uh, the Avalon framework, there's nothing special about that talking to the SBX. It's just a, just a general purpose uh, smart contract or, or chain code that does registry. So it tells you which, which node is to be trusted has been vet, vetted into the framework. It's it's like a permissioning thing, so you can use the common language with the libraries uh, uh, to write it. Um, it there's, there's nothing special about that with great okay. okay. Hey guys, I think we're going to join at eleven to continue on the hands-on stuff. Thank you guys.